God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining The Authentic Word. I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford, and I'm excited for you again today. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to the program from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We just give him all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor belongs to him. He is so awesome. I'm excited for you again today because we're still on this series about the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the Spirit of God that's in us. Oh, wow. And why he gave us his Spirit once we received and accepted him as our Lord, our Savior, our God, our King, our help, our provider, our everything. He's, he, he's Jesus. He is Jesus, and he is the Father. And so the Holy Spirit is the Father's Spirit here on the earth, and Jesus gave that to us when he breathed on the disciples. And But how you receive it is by believing. He said, who believe on me shall receive it. And so... Why is it important? Because you need it in order to become a son of God. And I've showed you this before, but I'm going to show it to you again. Let's go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And in that chapter, wow, it's so easy and so simple. And it's a matter of faith. And, you know, without faith, you can't receive salvation. You can't receive healing. You can't receive the blessings of God because you're blessed going in and you're blessed coming out. When you become the son and daughter of God, you're always blessed. But you think you're blessed now in your own natural abilities and skills and family and love and things that you do. But the real blessings are eternal. The real blessings are spirit. The eternal blessings are spirit because you are a spirit now if you got born again and receive the Holy Spirit. So in John chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 12, well, verse 11. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own meaning his own people. Wow. His own people. His own people didn't receive you. And, you know, some of us have experienced that in our own families, too, where our own family members don't receive us. Why? Because we've become sons and daughters of God, and, and if they're not sons and daughters, sometimes they don't receive us, or even before that, or after that, you know, circumstances and situations, and so people get upset, and so that happens. But his, in this case... His own people didn't believe who he say he was, meaning he was the son of God, meaning he came to save us, he came to heal. He said, I, I came to not condemn the world, but to save the world. He came to save the world, and he wants the world to accept him and love him and receive him, but if you choose not to do that, there is a consequence. And it's a long-term consequence. And that's why God is so merciful. He's so long-suffering and kind because he wants to give everyone time to receive him. All of those, because he's the God of the living, not the dead. And so once you have made your decision to receive him, he gives you the power and that power is called the Holy Spirit. So look at verse 11. And he came unto his own, his own received him not. In verse 12, but as many as what? As many as received him. When you receive somebody, you embrace them, you give them a part of yourself, and they share themselves with you as well. So he said, receive them. As many as received him, to them he gave him what? He gave power. Gave he power. Gave he power. He gave them the power 
to become sons of God. And that's what he was. And they said he was blaspheming. They said he was this and that. Everything but what he was. <laughs> they wanted to believe the opposite was true. Why? Because they didn't want God to come, especially the rulers, those who are already ruling and inherit. He did all he did to try to get rid of Jesus before he even grew up because they had prophesied to him that this was a king and this king was coming to take over and to rule and to reign and so he couldn't stand the thought of anybody else ruling and reigning. <laughs> wow. And so what did God do? God, he just very calmly says, look, I'm the son of God. I came here to save. I came here to deliver. I came here to heal. I came here to set people free. And he says, I want you to become my son and my daughter so that you can do what I do. And that's why he gave he the power, anybody, whoever you are, to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Wow. So if you believe on the name of Jesus, you're going to receive something. Not only are you forgiven and you're washed and you're cleansed of all your sins and your iniquities, and all the wrong thoughts and things that you've done in the past and the present. But God said, I'm going to give you a brand new start. I'm going to give you the power to do some things for me that's more amazing, that's miraculous. And then you can walk in the supernatural. You can operate in the supernatural. Oh, wow. So let me pray for you right now. I don't know if I did that or not because I'm drunk under the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, everyone who's watching, open up their spirit to receive these revelation word, your knowledge, your understanding of what you're speaking into them right now, Lord, and that their hearing is clear, and it's anointed to hear. You're anointed to receive whatever you have to say to them anoint them to receive it, and we just bless your holy name, and we thank you right now in Jesus' name, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray, and say amen with me, amen. So, he said, and so I'm going to give you this power, and to anybody who believe on my name too, Aha, and you're going to get born again, which were born of God. You're now you're born but of God now. You're not born of flesh and blood. No, not that. You were already you already been born of flesh and blood. And that's that's part of the problem. <laughs> because we were born in sin, we were born in flesh and blood because of what Adam and Eve did. So God says, Okay, we already had the plan. We're gonna bring the plan to manifestation now. You're going to go down and you're going to be the redeemer so that we can get our family members back. Anybody who wants to be a son or daughter, God can be. Hallelujah. Praise God. So there is the proof. And so the word is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the word. And so now let's look at, uh, so that was in the uh, first chapter of John. Now let's look at, uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 4. 1 Corinthians 12. Praise the Lord. And so, because the Holy Spirit is so many wonderful uh, characteristics, gifts, uh, gifts of the Spirit dwell in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit uh, is your power. He's your strength. 
The Holy Spirit is your helper. He helps you through whatever it is that you need to do. And he will take care of it for you. He will take care of it for you when you trust in him. When, and how do you do that? Through faith. So he gives you the faith. He is the faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is the faith. He, he, he gives you the faith. <laughs> he gives you everything you need to be all that he has appointed and destined. Reliable, has a destined for you to become. And so it's a growing process. You grow in the power. You grow in the authority. You grow in the uh, uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you desire to do so, and he said, because you have my power, there's a purpose for that power. And so the Holy Spirit gives that to you. So let's, let's look at this. Well, let's start in verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, and I would not have you ignorant. So you don't need to be ignorant about who the Holy Spirit is and what he can do. And he has gifts. And he has put gifts in us. And some of us don't know our gifts. So once we get to start to know him, we'll begin to learn and find out what our gifts are. That's the spirit of Jesus. He will show you. He will lead you. He will guide you through and what and who you are. When you seek him first, he said, seek me first. Jesus said this. He said, seek me first in the kingdom of God and my righteousness. And everything you need shall be added to you. So if you seeking him to find out who you are, what your gifts and your callings are, Wow, don't you want to walk in that? That's so powerful. That's so awesome. And so you, you're going to be able to bless people. And look at verse 2, and he said, And you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, you know, idols you made with your own hands. You're going to worship them? You're going to lift them up above me? When they can't even talk, they can't answer you, they can't hear, they can't speak, they can't do anything for you and and yet you were led by them wherefore i give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of god calleth jesus accursed and that no man can say that jesus is the lord but by the holy spirit only by the holy ghost don't you know the only way that you can really say that and know that that is the truth, that by the Spirit of God. And so the Spirit of God speaks through you. The Spirit of God ministers through you. The Spirit of God helps others through you. The Spirit of God will have you teaching the Word of God. And the only way you can say Jesus is the Lord is but by the Spirit of God. And remember when he told Simon Peter that? He said, Peter, you're not saying this. This didn't come from you. This came from the Father in heaven. That you, He said that you are the Christ. Wow. You think Peter just came up with that? No, not at all. The Holy Spirit spoke through his mouth to identify who Jesus really is. And what did he say? You are the Christ. You are the Son of God. <laughs> and Jesus immediately recognized the Spirit of God that was in him that spoke through Peter. Hallelujah. And then he also recognized when the Spirit of God didn't speak through Peter, when he said, you know, um, what was the example about that? I just It just slipped my mind, so I guess it's not important right now. But God, when, when the Holy Spirit spoke through Peter, uh, oh, yes, when the Holy Spirit uh, spoke through Peter and he said that, and so Jesus acknowledged that. And when he also said to uh, uh, his disciples about many other things. So let's move on now. 
and there are diversities of gifts. There are a lot of different gifts, but guess what? They're all of the same spirit. They are all from the Holy Spirit. Every gift is from the Holy Spirit. And so every child is born with something special on the inside of them. Many gifts, many of us have many. Some have a lot more, some have a lot less. Some, everybody has some, something. That's why you're so important to God. No matter who you are, no matter where you came from, you're so important to God because he needs your gift to develop. He needs your gift to operate. He needs you to walk with him, to learn of him. He said, you can only do it if you're agreeing with my spirit that I put in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so he said, it's all the same spirit, though, the diversities of gifts. And there are differences of administrations. So you have different kinds of administrations. Everybody don't operate the same way. They don't have to. They're operating according to their gift that God have put in them. Some are very good organizers. Some are very uh, good at other things. But uh, some are good at speaking, orators, good speakers. That's a gift. Uh, some are, are good at artistic things, decorating and administrating in huge companies. And so it's just not always the material, physical things that we're gifted in, but we can be gifted in the spirit things as well. So the gifts of the spirit, hallelujah. So there's different administrations, but the same Lord. It's the same God. It's the same Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. And then look at verse 6. And there are diversities of operations. Everybody don't operate the same way. Different ministries have different callings for different purposes. So your operations are going to be along the line according to your gift. And what part of the operations are you a part of? It's according to your gifts. Oh, wow. God says his Holy Spirit ministers into you according to his destiny and his purpose and his will for your life. That's exactly what I just interpreted, what I said in the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit knows what to say to you, what to get you to do what he needs you to do in the earth realm, why you were born, why he gave you the gifts that you have. He wants you to use them. Quit being content with not using your gifts. If you know your gifts, start allowing the Holy Spirit to use you to use your gifts. So let him work those gifts according to his plan and purpose. Why do I say his plan and purpose? Because your plan and your purpose may not line up with his. So he wants you to get in that place where it will and that what he's going to have you do is going to take faith. It's not going to always just be easy, bam, 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 bam. No. It's going to take whatever he's called you to do, it's going to take faith to do it. Why do I say that? I say that because he doesn't want you doing things without him being involved. He wants to be involved in your life because what he has for you is always better than what you could come up with. And <laughs> what you can ask or think. He said, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you're asking me and all that you think it because your thinking is so limited. You like to limit God. That's what we do. We limit God. God said, I don't want you to limit me. Stop li limiting me. Think bigger. You think too small, think bigger. I can do anything. I am the God of the impossible. My Holy Spirit can do the impossible. What do you think the Holy Spirit did when he put himself in the womb of a woman? He did the impossible. And she gave birth to a beautiful child. 
Why? Because that's the Holy Spirit power that was growing, that she nurtured inside of her. And that's what we have to do. Nurture the spirit that's inside of us. Feed him what he needs. That's his word, his own word, because that's the most effective. That's the most powerful. That's why you pray the word when you pray about anything. You pray it according to the word. The word says, look, you, you've already succeeded. You're already more than a conqueror because I live inside of you. You do not fear. Do not be afraid. I have not given you that kind of a spirit. My spirit is one of love and power and of a sound mind. And so we can go and read about all of the, the, the characteristics and the nature of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to cover that next time because I know uh, my time is getting short right now. But uh, so the operations, everybody don't operate the same way. And so we have to allow for the flowing of the person's gift that God have put in them. And if you are the leader, you need to allow those who God have assigned and appointed to help you to accomplish what you are assigned to do. <laughs> to allow the freedom of the Holy Spirit to work through them. And you trust him because he's going to do it. Why? Because he wants the same thing you want. As a matter of fact, he wants it more than you want it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now let's go. And so, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. That's why you don't have to be in fear. You don't have to panic. You don't have to say, oh, oh we can't do this because we haven't got enough money. And you're judging everything and uh, and you operating a cut according to your personal budget. No, you operate according to God's unlimited budget, supernatural budget. He will give you what you need to do what he has told you to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you don't have to be greedy. You don't have to beat anybody over the head for what they want to do. No, you pray and you ask God to touch their hearts and say, Lord, you already know what I need. Touch this person or whoever you want to touch, whoever you want to cause them to give into this assignment, into this appointment, into this purpose, into this destiny, into your will. Anything that is his will, he is going to make sure that you have everything you need to get it accomplished. Hallelujah. And then not only that, the Holy Spirit works in supernatural ways all the time, all the time. He said, do not limit me. Oh, my, that is really for somebody right there. Do not limit me because, and it doesn't matter how big your operation is, how big your company is, how big your, your ministry is, or how small it is. None of that matters. When God has given you an assignment, he is going to also give you all of the resources, all of the source of everything you need to accomplish it. What he has put in your spirit to do, allow him to do it. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. Do not doubt. Do not hesitate because none of those are of his spirit. And so we're going to finish this in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, next time, because it's so amazingly powerful. The Holy Spirit is very, very strategic in everything he does. And so just trust him. Amen. And so I'll see you next time. And don't forget my book, The Church That Makes the Difference. And I love you, and God bless you. Shalom, shalom.